Hi folks and welcome to Attica Armory. So we're going to do something a little bit different today. I know we've got quite a few folks that are kind of preppers that watch this channel. If you're a prepper in any type of uh, magnitude or severity, you probably have heard of these Baofeng UV5R radios. I don't really want to get too much into the legality and the licensing issues. Those are really long convoluted conversations if you're interested in swimming in some really murky waters I would definitely refer you over to the FCC.gov website and take a look at you know some of the different things that are going on that might affect these and of course there you'll be able to admire the life's work of an army of unelected bureaucrats making all kinds of rules and regulations that are now I guess the law so um, beyond that let's let's skip over all that stuff and talk about how to program these things uh, programming the UV5R can definitely be done through just the the dial interface on the radio but it is going to be slow and it's going to take a while it's definitely way easier to use the chirp software and a USB programming cable to do this I know there's definitely some fake ones out there that don't work well or that are giving people issues so check the description I'll leave you guys links to everything that um, you know that I'm talking about here here, and I'll show you how to use the Chirp software real quickly. Program your UV5R in a quick and easy way. So with that, let's uh, head over to the computer and I'll show you guys how this works. All right, so the first thing that I'm doing here is I uh, just went over to this website to download the Chirp installer. And I'm using the Windows installer because I'm on a Windows 10 machine. And I actually didn't have to install any kind of drivers for the USB cable. It just automatically recognized it on Windows 10 as a serial port. So one thing to note is that it did not function on the USB 3 ports. It only worked on the USB 2 ports. So if you're having issues just make sure that you're in that you're plugged into a USB 2 port and not a USB 3 and it should work okay. All right, so once you get the Chirp software installed and you've got your Baofeng radio plugged into it, you can see here that I've got uh, I've got my USB cable going into the microphone and headphone slash control port and uh, you want to go ahead and just turn on your radio and you want to turn it all the way up 100% so you're getting maximum power going to and from that port and you also want to make sure that you're not on a channel that's occupied so if you keep receiving something or um, you know if there's any kind of signals coming into it just change the channel and uh, try a different channel and this is our interface here so we've got kind of standard file edit view radio help menu um, so what you can do if you'd like to start off just in case uh, you already have some programs in your radio you can click on radio download from radio and I'm actually on the COM5 port and just go ahead and select your Baofeng so I'm going to select UV5R and hit OK. Now this is giving, um, this is kind of a warning saying that the driver slash firmware is uh, experimental. But I'm going to go ahead and proceed. I didn't have any issues with it myself. So I'm going to go ahead and just hit yes. And then it gives you some instructions and I've already kind of done all of those things. So we're just going to hit OK. And you can see the cloning progress pop up here. I'm going to switch over to that tab so you can see here uh, I created a new tab and that's actually what's already on this radio. Uh, if you'd like to save these you can go up to file and you can save or save as and just save a copy of this wherever you want. Uh, we're not going to save because I'm just going to do a full uh, complete 
you know, reprogram of this thing. I'm going to start at channel 1 and I'm just left mouse clicking on it one time. And then I'm going to hold shift and left mouse click on the last channel, which is 21 here. And I'm going to right click and go over delete and I'm gonna delete these memories. You can also uh, shift blocks up or shift all memories up uh, if you want to preserve some stuff in there. Uh, those are other options but I'm just gonna go delete these memories and now those are all cleared. Alright next what we're gonna do is click on the file menu and go to open stock config and let's just kinda of start with uh, some some basic stuff like uh, the MERS channels Okay, so that opens a new tab over here. This is uh, these are basically just CSV files, comma separated values, and I'm going to click on one, hold shift, and click on five. So now I've got all five of those uh, selected. I'm going to right click, and I'm going to copy, or you can Control C, and then I'm going to go back to our radio, and I'm going to just select that first channel and right click paste or control V to paste on Windows and as you can see it brought in all of those and what I like to do is just skip a channel because I'm not going to be filling up all 127, 128 channels so I'm just going to skip a channel so that I know I have some kind of reference on the radio that I'm moving to a different band or uh, FCC category so to speak so let's just uh, we'll start on 7 for the next one I'm gonna close this out close this out once again file open stock config let's do the FRS and GMRS frequencies next and then we'll switch over to that tab and I'm gonna start on the first channel and again shift click to select all of those channels down to 52 and copy and then I'm just gonna go over to this channel here and paste and there they are Okay. now you can keep doing this with all of these presets all you want you can load you know the marine VHF channels um, calling frequencies, railroad channels, uh, NOAA channels, whatever you want uh, that's in here. And you can also, if you want to program in your own channel, say you've got some uh, favorite ham radio operators that you want to follow or uh, local ham clubs, you can just click on the frequency here and you can type in your own frequency uh, 468 point five okay and then you can type in some notes uh, whatever kind of notes uh, local sheriff something like that and it will just automatically kind of convert that into all caps and that's it I think you're limited to seven characters I believe you can also do things like set the offset over here if you need offset for say you know if you want to access uh, local repeaters or things like that you can set those here and you can also set the power settings as well if you like now once you get all of these populated with whatever it is uh, channels that you're interested in you can go again to file save or file save as and um, just save those out as an IMG file um, you can also export these as CSV files using the export menu and there you can see radio.csv alright so once we've saved it, once we're comfortable with all the channels that are on here, what we want to do is go back to radio and then we're going to click upload to radio. And again we're using COM5, Baofeng, UV5R, those are grayed out uh, because it is recognized so we're just going to hit OK. And again those instructions pop up, uh, you can not show instructions but I'm just gonna leave that and same warning we're gonna hit yes 
and there is our cloning progress little uh, bar again and once that's done we'll go ahead and check and make sure that everything cloned properly now I'm not sure how well you guys are going to be able to see this screen here but um, I'm just doing a little spot checking and I can see that channel 15 is showing uh, 467.5875 megahertz and when I go to channel 15 up here on my screen I can see that it is corresponding 467.5875 on FRS channel 9 and uh, that basically looks good let's say I uh, go down to channel 13 on my list uh, once again that is saying 462.7125 on the radio and I go up to my screen and I can see channel 13 462.7125 for FRS channel 7 so basically that is uh, it looks like everything worked on that and I think we're good to go and one other little side note when you're buying accessories and cables and all kinds of stuff chargers whatever uh, extension cords things like that for these uh, there are a lot of kind of shoddy products being sold out there so uh, I definitely recommend that you use something like a little multimeter to test the voltage on things like chargers batteries and to test for continuity problems on accessories and connectors before you actually plug them into your radios or to your antennas one thing I also uh, wanted to mention is the case that these are in so I actually picked this thing up at Harbor Freight it's an aluminum kind of tool case and it's got this foam rubber type interior now uh, this is not going to be as solid or stable for moving things around if you're planning on having these out in the field a lot but one thing I do really like about this case is that it acts as a Faraday cage so you can see here that it actually has a pretty good interlocking edge that goes around and it it actually goes all the way up inside of the top portion of this and it's isolated with this foam rubber padding so as long as that rubber padding does not you know get hammered and you start having contact with the outer wall uh, aluminum is a conductive material so when this thing is closed it'll actually act as a Faraday cage to protect these devices from electromagnetic disturbances so that about wraps it up folks uh, you can see how really quite easy this is uh, you don't have to be an IT expert or anything like that the software is very intuitive uh, got a got to hand it to the folks that are working on the chirp project um, it's just exceptional software it's simple it's to the point um, it gets the job done and with that we hope you guys found this video informative and entertaining and please feel free to comment below with any questions or concerns or issues that you might be having we can try to help you through those don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you again next time at Attica Armory.